Hello, welcome to Windshine Audio channel. I'm Elvin, owner of Windshine Audio. Let's talk about the Dinafrips flagship Terminator Plus DAC today. So I'm going to split this video into a couple of more videos. Um, the Terminator Plus is a little bit more complicated compared to the rest of the DAC on, uh, with, uh, on Dinafrips lineup. It comes with a clock synchronization, uh, it comes with I2S input, uh, various of them. Uh, there are three of the I2S input that you can use. So I'll split this video into a few of them so that you guys don't have to go through a long video and, or, or listen to me to talk about all this feature or function that, the, that might not be of interest to you. Dinafri Flex Terminator Plus and uh, it weighs about 22 kilograms. It's a pretty big one as you can see. It occupied most of the space on my desk. and. Uh, once you receive the unit, please place it on the study table top with care. We ship this Terminator Plus or the Terminator 2 with a spike shield and a spike. So please install the spike and spike shield with the help with a good helping hand. If you have another person to help you to install this guy, that would be good. Otherwise, um, you got to really pay attention when you set up this Terminator Plus. Otherwise, the spike or spike shield may damage the tabletop surface. That is the last thing we really want. Okay, so once you receive the unit and um, place it on the study table, we do not ship the unit with power cord. We believe at this level, the generic power cord will likely end up in a trash. Audio file at this level would have their preferred power cord to use already. So we don't ship the Terminator plus DAC or the the rest of the Terminator no, or the rest of the Dino Phipps DAC for that matter with the power cord because the generic power cord will likely end up in trash. We do not want to contribute to, to the waste of power cord. Right, I always recommend the customer to use studio grade cable. This is a studio grade cable from Gotham, um, Switzerland. It's a studio grade cable used in pro audio, broadcasting environment or studio environment. Or Mogami cable, also used in um, uh, studio grade environment. They are inexpensive. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, the quality is pretty good. Right. I'm going to show you some of the tricks that you can do to this um, Terminator Plus DAC, how to further optimize or how to tune it to sound best in your system. I have a generic power cord here that I can use to power up this guy. So uh, there's auto sensing, auto voltage sensing um, circuitry inside the Terminator Plus. As soon as you plug in the power cord, the auto sensing microprocessor will detect the AC mains. If you are in the US, the voltage is 120. If you are in Europe, UK, or like me in Singapore, the voltage will be 220. So the auto sensing is done internally. It switches a couple of relay to send the correct voltage to the transformer to power up the DAC. So you will hear a couple of relay kicking sound once you plug in the power cord. It takes about three to five seconds for the DAC to completely start up. So during these two, three to five seconds, just do not touch. Air. Do not touch or meddle with the front panel. Right, let me, plug, let me plug in the power cord and you should hear the relay kicking sound. I hope the microphone is sensitive enough to pick it up. Okay, power cord plug in. First kicking. Second and third relay kicking. So as the relay clicks, the power is sent from the power cord to the power supply unit to power up the DAC. And you, you will notice that the standby LED here turned on. It tells us that the DAC is already powered up, it is in standby. So it will, it will turn on as soon as you hit on the power button once. So as you hit on the power button once, the DAC goes into operation mode where it will display the last used digital input. Let me see what it is. It was, the last used digital input was a coaxial input. There are a couple of buttons on the front panel that allows you to do some simple setting. For example, the input minus button allows you to change the input signal from the right to the left. Because it is already on the leftmost side, pressing the input minus button doesn't have any effect. So if you want to choose the rest of the digital input that you want to use, press on the input plus button. As you press the input plus button multiple times, the LED change from the left to the right. So you may choose the correct input to use by pressing this input plus and minus button. So as you press on the input minus button, the input digital input selection change from the right to the left. So the, this two button is really for you to choose the correct digital input that you want to use. There are some other buttons here. Hang on a second. This is the mute button. So if you want to mute the deck, simply press on the mute button. As you hit the mute button, 
the milk engage and the LED blink from the left to the right. This tells us that the DSC is in mute mode. This can also be a configuration mode. I'll talk more, I'll talk more, more about it later. So press on the mute once again to disable the mute mode. So it will be back to operation and um, if it is already playing music, the output will the output will produce sound. Okay, some other button here that might be of interest to you. OS and NOS button. Toggle this button to select NOS or OS. When NOS LED is on, it is in NOS mode. When, o when the NOS LED is off, it is in OS mode. For Dynaflips DAC, OS mode comes with two filters, slow filter and sharp filters. So how do you choose this filter just by using this front panel here? Ah, you don't find any filter selection here. It is because we have limited button, we have limited display here, there's no large display. The setting of the filter has to be done in the configuration mode. So how do you go into configuration mode? You need to hit on the mute button once. As the mute engage, the LED blink from the left to the right. At this point in time, you can press on the mute button multiple times to toggle it to change the filter of the DAC. Hang on a second, let me see which LED turned on and off. Okay, as you, if you, as you toggle the mute button, one X LED toggle on and off. Not only that, there are a couple more LED light up, like the AES one. It tells us that it is in configuration mode. And leave the LED 1X on for slow filter. Leave the LED off for sharp filter. I personally prefer slow filter. I'll leave the 1X LED on. So after a couple of seconds later, the DAC will be back to normal operation mode where the last selected digital input will light up. Ah, it is already back to operation mode where AES1 lights up. So you may ask, how do you check the filter setting? Because there's no display here to tell you uh, whether it is in slow filter or sharp filter. You can do this by going into the configuration mode and hit on the mute button to check the filter setting. Hit on the mute button once. As the mute engage, the input LED turn on and off from the left to the right. Hit on the mute button once. You'll notice 1x LED turn on and 8x LED turn on. It tells us that it is in configuration mode. The selected filter was slow filter because 1x LED is on. After a couple of seconds later, it will be back to normal operation where the last selected digital input will light up. So it takes a couple of seconds and we'll wait for it to happen. It's a moment of silence. We are waiting for something to happen. <laughs> right, does it go back to operation mode? I think it will. Right, so XX and 1X LED turn on and AES at 1 LED turn on. So it backs to normal operation. Some other function that might be of interest to you. Yes, face button. So as you toggle the face button, the face LED turn on and off. Uh, it is one of the most frequently asked questions, what really the face button does in a DAC. So there's no hard rule here. Um, you have to match. You have to select one of the face to match with the source of your system. Um, there's no hard rule, it's really because amplifier in the system or a loudspeaker speaker in the system um, varies between one to another. So leaving the face LED on is positive face. Leaving the face LED off is negative face. It really has to do with your transport, your amplifier and your loudspeaker. And you have to find one of the modes that, that suits your taste. In all honesty, in my desktop setup, I can't really tell the difference between positive face or negative face. I'm leaving the, the face LED on here for positive face. If you use I2S input, you have to navigate the input, my input plus button to stay at I2S. It is important to know that for I2S input, the I2S pinout has to be set correctly before you use it. So I have another video to cover the I2S um, pinout configuration in a, in a much comprehensive way. Please refer to the, to the video for I2S pinout configuration. Um, you have to know what is I2S before you really use it. Otherwise, mismatch of I2S pinout will generate loud noise and the excessive noise may damage the loudspeaker driver. So, before you even use I2S, please go through the video so that you have an understanding of what I2S is all about. Right, I think that's about it for the front panel. Let me flip it to the back panel and show you what are the input available. I'll first unplug the power cord and move this guy gently, not to damage my nice solid wood tabletop. I hope it doesn't. 
Okay, at the back panel here, we have an IC inlet for power cord connection. The digital input is on the right side, the analog output is on the left side. So what do we have for digital input? I square USB input. I square S over two RJ45 and one HDMI. So again, I square S is not typical RJ45 network connection, not a typical HDMI multimedia connection. Please refer to my another video for I square S setup guide. And we have two AES EBU input and one coax, one optical input and one coaxial input. You notice there are two additional connections here. These are the clock output that can that can out the, the DAC can output two different clock outputs to synchronize with the upstream equipment. For example, if you have a Dynaflips DDC with you, you can clock sync the Terminator Plus or the Terminator 2 for that matter with the DDC to further improve the sound quality reproduction. I'll talk more about it in another video, otherwise this video will be getting too long. And we have a pair of RCA output and a pair of XL output. So these are the analog output. Dynaflips DAC are true balance. It is recommended to use the XLR output whenever possible. It is also important to note that the XLR and RCA output are shared. So please connect one at a time, but not both simultaneously. Connecting both RCA and XLR output at, at the same time may have an adverse effect to the sound quality. So in the event that you need to connect both RCA and XLR output at the same time, please refer to the recommendation uh, link in the description. All right. I think I have talked all about the Terminator Plus DAC operation already and oh one last thing. I always recommend the customer to keep the DAC on 24-7, especially for Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. Reason being is keeping the DAC in standby or fully on mode, it helps the OCXO inside to keep at a temperature equilibrium. The circuitry will be kept warm and it will be it will sound best the next time you use it. So I have a few customers notice this um, behavior where Dina Flips DAC better fits from long burning as well as um, keeping the DAC on play a big part in the sound quality. So you may try an error. If you do not believe me, you can you can turn it on for a long time to hear the sound differences, or you can have it turn off and turn on the next day you want to use it, and you'll notice the drastic change in change in the sound quality. So if you listen to the music every day, a couple of hours a day, it is recommended to keep the DAC on. It draws about 25 watt uh, in on mode or in standby mode, so it's a very little consumption. So if you listen to music every day, it is recommended to keep it on all the time. I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button for not notification. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.